talking about the subject of peace and finding peace in anxious times. It's just been amazing how God just wants to minister to people, and now is the day for us to be prayed for as we need to. But uh, there's such darkness out in the world, but there's help in Christ, isn't there? So let me just move on with this this morning, and I think I'm going to try to conclude this today. And um, just wanted to make sure that we know that when we receive Jesus, we become a whole new person. Everything becomes new. You get a new spirit, a new nature. You're a new person. You're what the Word of God says. You are born again. Now, you know your flesh wasn't born again, but it was your spirit that was born again. It was your spirit made in the likeness and image of God that was born again. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. That's amazing, isn't it? Because whenever we came to Jesus, no matter what age you were, well, I, I don't know that I had a bad history because I got saved when I was three. <laughs> so, but anyway, everybody needs God, right? I'm sure I stole a bottle or something. But anyway, um, wherever you are receiving Christ, you become a new person. He remits your sin. It's wiping out as though it never existed and you have a fresh start. You're a new person. Isn't that good? And, and you, you have no past anymore. Thank God. And as you walk with God and, and you mess up, the Word says He's faithful. If you confess your sins, He's faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there we go. We get a restart there as well. Sometimes when, he get, when we get it right with God, though, He'll, he'll demand us to get it right with someone else. So it's not just, I got it right with God, what's your problem? <laughs> no, don't do that. Uh, we need to have tender hearts. Here's another great scripture that my wife uh, shared recently, and I said, man, I'm going to write that down. And this really, it, this really applies to us being a new cre creation in Christ Jesus. When we receive Jesus, we become a new creation, and we become a child of God. So Ephesians 2.14 in the Passion says, our reconciling peace is what? Jesus. He has made Jew and non-Jew one in Christ. By dying as our sacrifice, he has broken down every wall of prejudice that separated us and has now made us equal through our union with Christ. Ethnic hatred and has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been repealed, repealed by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us by starting over, forming one new race of humanity. It's called kingdom culture. We're, bat we're all, no matter what culture we are, no matter what race we are, no matter what age we are, we're baptized into Christ, and we want to learn how to live in His ways of doing and being right. And there's a lot of healing uh, that can take place when we realize that we come into the kingdom of God, we become a child of God, we operate in the Word of God, which is His, his instructions for the kingdom. So it's like we're starting over, forming one new race of humanity, not, not with our flesh, but with our heart. Jews and non-Jews uh, fused together in himself. Two have now become one, and we live restored to God and reconciled in the body of Christ through the crucifixion, hatred died. Let me say that again. Through the crucifixion, hatred died. The only way that we're really going to get healing to all cultures is to come into the kingdom and be restored and, you know, talk about some things that weren't necessary, were, were terrible that happened in the past. And we, we talk about that. But then we realize we need to operate in the kingdom of God. Some people need to get it out before they can get healed. And, and so that's what I'm saying here today. But again, when we're born again, though, 
we receive God's life, His nature, and the fruit of the Spirit on the inside of our spirit. It's not in your flesh. It's not in your mind. Because your flesh and your mind doesn't want to operate in the love of God much. Don't ask your flesh if, if you want to give someone a piece of your mind. Sure, I would. But Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and I apologize, we had the different translation. Our folks up there didn't have the passion. But the fruit, did they? Okay. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within the part that was born again accomplishes is they, all these things are in the inside of you if you're saved. Love. If you consult your mind and your spirit, renewed by the, your mind renewed on the Word of God and your spirit, you, you can walk in love around the unlovely. Amen. And you, you, can, you, you can hold your peace and you can stay out of it, back off it if you can't say a thing. What? What's that old saying? If you can't say nothing good, don't say anything at all. So, um, but the Word of God says the love of God's been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Joy is placed in our heart. Gladness. And the next one is peace. We've been working on having peace in anxious times. Patience and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, you have a teachable spirit, self-control, self-restraint. That gives us the power not to have to give someone a piece of our mind or not to act out. You know, self-control can hold your anger at check. You can just, and then you cool off and you get back in your heart. And how, many, how many have you been in a situation that you walked in self-control but you wanted to say something, and thank God you didn't. How many, how many have been there? Okay. So how many have been in the situation where you didn't walk in self-control, and you went ahead and blasted? You put it on blast. Yeah. How, how, how'd that work for you? <laughs> uh, not so good. The fruit of peace is in us. You know, you, you can... The... Uh, Romans talks about how we can, we can feel the motions of our flesh. When something's going on around us, all of a sudden there's a, a rumbling of something. Like it's, it's, it's not, it got to your feet. It's rumbling. I just, oh my goodness, I don't like that. And then it gets to your knees and it gets to your chest. And just don't let it out of your mouth. Just. Self-control, smile, walk away, regroup, and you, you can overcome. Self-restraint, continence against such there is no law that can bring a charge. The fruit of the Spirit is in us. God's peace is in our spirit. So we can find peace in anxious times. Just right now, say, God, I yield to your peace. I know it's on the inside of me. I thank you for helping me develop it. Now, boy, that was a dangerous prayer. Whenever you ask God to use you, what does he start doing? I've had people before cry out, God, if you would just use me, use me, God, use me, God. And about a month later, they're saying, man, I feel so used. <laughs> and then you just prayed for peace. God, I thank you for that peace on the inside of me developing. Guess what? You're going to have some tests. <laughs> Come on, how many have some tests trying to get you out of your peace? That's why I couldn't go on to the service because you, you couldn't enjoy it if you, you, you had a rumbling going on. And God's trying to help us in all these areas so we act like Him, the Word manifested in the flesh. So, 2 Peter um, 1 2, you can write the reference down. I didn't give that as a reference, but. It defines God's peace in us, and I like this definition. Think about it if you're in this situation. God's peace in us is perfect well-being. You know, again, a lot of times we have to have peace of heart and peace of mind as we renew our mind on the Word of God. It defines peace as perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, 
and listen, freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. How, how do we develop in this peace? That's what I'm going to focus on and give you a few points today, just to bring us into conclusion. How do we develop this God kind of peace that I can have when it seems like everything around me is, is at unrest, yet I can still have rest? You say, Pastor Cohen, but sometimes I yield to that peace, but my body doesn't feel like I'm in rest, and my mind is trying to go sideways on me. That's normal. We walk in the Spirit, so we do not fulfill the lust of our flesh. We can do that with God's help. Another reason why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because power kicks in to help us navigate difficult situations. Well, we said, how do we develop in the God kind of peace? Well, first of all, number one, we've heard it once. We're going to hear it a bazillion times before Jesus comes back. By the way, is a bazillion a real number? How many know that that's just a lot? That's what I meant. All right, Romans 12, 2 in the message. I want to read there. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture. You know, we get so st stuck in our culture that white people can't get along with black people. Black people can't get along with white people. Brown people can't, you know, how can I, how can I um, express to you? Just, just think of all the different cultures of humanity. If we stay in our own culture, we will never break that systemic prejudice, no matter what, whether you're black, whether you're female, whether you're, and, and then, we, then we won't be able to function in the kingdom where we are in Christ now, where God, where God loved us so much that, that he gave us his life in nature. You know, I, do, I, I did a wedding yesterday, and I've never done this before in a wedding, and before we started, because we had um, most of the black folks here yesterday, and I just treat everybody like family. And sometimes I get some looks. But I wanted to say to them, I said, listen, aren't we so glad? Kia is our fa in, our fa in our family. She has, you know, been with us for, for some years, and then she went back home to, to help her mama in, in church. And uh, I said, I'm so glad grace has no race. I'm so glad that when we are baptized in the Christ, we all become a brand new creation. And that's the solution for all the mess going on out there in the world is coming into the kingdom where there is neither white nor black, male nor female, Gentile or Greek but one in Christ. So I just treat everybody, you know, greet them, love them, whether they like me or not. I have been in situations where I haven't been received. And, but God, and when I was doing a, a funeral or whether I was doing a, ser a service somewhere else, by the end of the service, because we ministered on God's Word and the kingdom, everybody's at peace. You can't deny the anointing. You can try to. But we all need to change in some ways, don't we? Don't be so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. We shouldn't fit into the stuff out there in the world. Instead, fix your attention on God and His Word. You'll be changed from what? The inside out, readily recognizing what He wants from you and quickly responding to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Now, I, I, I did love yesterday, we had Harvest Church folks of all races, just going on around and just treating everybody because we're on we're at the same level. He made us all the same. Now he gave us he gave us different assignments. So 
I love that because we have such a great love for one another in this church. And we're learning from each other. And uh, so, thank God we can. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we do what? Because we what? Because we what? What? Where? As in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are constantly being transfigured into His very own image in ever-increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. You will get caught up in the racial divide out there if you don't renew your mind and think like God thinks about the situation. We've had panel discussions before because, again, there has been systemic prejudice that, that we needed to talk about, get, get exposed to the light. And I, I have no problem, no problem asking forgiveness for our forefathers. But that's not me. I was raised in a melting pot in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My best friends were every color. We didn't see each other any, any different way. I was raised that way. When I travel with Bishop, sometimes my wife and I with Bishop and Lady Joy, and we're traveling with them, sometimes we get the worst looks. But guess what I do? I maintain my peace. I walk in the Spirit. I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you know what? It's about time the body of Christ needs to stand up and set an example. I had a comment from the, the ceremony yesterday. He says, man, I want to come check your church out because I love all these races. As a matter of fact, let me bring this home. In heaven, there's not the white church. There is not the black church. There is not whatever color church. Look around, and you're going to see what God's church looks like. Let's find out who we are in Christ so that anything that is from the Word of God, we learn and we, we adapt our life and we change, and that change on the inside of us with all the fruit of the Spirit, as we develop in the fruit of the Spirit, it begins to show up in our flesh, our actions, our words, our lifestyle. One of the biggest ways the devil tries to steal our peace is by trying to mess with our minds. Come on, sometimes we're, we're just fine as long as we're here at Harvest Church, but wait till I got home in the holidays. And there's still some snagging going on like, what are you doing at that white guy's church? I used to get that question. Um, when my wife and I, we, we have a black pastor. Just realized it. <laughs> Not really. But I know we were assigned to him because it was a divine connection, and we served him. We still serve them. So I understand, again, at funerals where I was, tr I tremendously stood out in the crowd. But you love people unconditionally. And you give them the word, and you let the Spirit of God fix this thing. Amen. Never be in a hurry. Think about your lifestyle. Never be in a hurry. Do everything quietly. How many said, that's, that's just not my personality. That's just not my, you know, I mean, I'm... So apply it to you as it applies. Never be in a hurry. 
Do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Do not lose your inner peace. For anything whatsoever, even if your whole world seems upset, yield to that peace. God, I'm yielding to your peace right now. And again, sometimes we'll have to get our act together and, and take a walk. Somebody has to maintain peace amidst the unrest. Someone has to walk in love where you're in a place that is culturally bent hard in whatever race it is. I would say as much as anything this ministry is called to, we are called for all races and all ages to worship together and fulfill the Great Commission together. Let me say it like this also. I could have, you know, read the story of Jesus coming over Mary and Martha's house. And, um, well, Mary is seated at the feet of Jesus, and Martha is cleaning the house. She's vacuuming. She's, uh, I'm just kidding. They didn't have vacuums back then. Uh, sweeping and cooking, and she just wants everything to be perfect because Jesus is coming. And, and then Mary is upsetting her, like, she's not doing anything. She's not doing her part. Well, and she, she brought this to Jesus, but, he said, but the Lord replied to her saying, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but there's only one or but a few things. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away. Don't take this scripture to the extreme, because I've seen Christians that if they, if they invited a sinner over their house, that sinner would say, yeah, they're a sinner just like us. Look at this mess. Where's that scripture? Clean, cleanliness? <laughs> just kidding. Cleanliness is next to godliness. It's not a scripture. <laughs> But I believe if you're clean on the inside, you're going to want to have cleanness on the outside. We've, yeah, my wife loves cleaning. You know, when, even when we go and rent somewhere to stay, my wife won't leave that place till it's clean. Say, babe, they're going to come in and clean. We have paid for it. And, uh, but we always like to leave places better than they were. All right. Number two. How do we develop the peace of God that's on the inside of us? Well, before that, let me conclude the first point that's said by renewing our minds on the Word of God, right? We have to pull aside. I said this a few times, it's worth repeating, so this is why I'm going back to it. If you don't pull aside, you will be pulled apart. If you don't pull aside, you'll be pulled apart. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. Now, number two, this peace is developed by getting into God's presence personally and corporately. Personally, there's things God does in our life different than corporately. Alexander McLaren said, Peace comes not from the absence of trouble, but from the presence of God. Peace comes not from the absence of trouble, but from the presence of God. Acts 4.13 says, Now when they saw the boldness and unfettered eloquence of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were unlearned and untrained in the schools common men with no educational advantages, they marveled and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. They saw their boldness. They saw, you know, they saw their commitment. They saw unfettered eloquence. So how would you like for people to be able to know that you've been with Jesus just by looking at you? Yeah, we need to check our, um, 
our face along the way. I, I, can, I know I, I, this is something I have to work on because I get a military face. Who got the military face going sometimes? And I'm just, I just get intense, and I'm looking. I sort of do things intensely, and then I realize, my goodness, I look like a pickle. <laughs> All right. Pickles are smooth. Hmm. Look at that person next to you and see if they look like a pickle. All right. It's possible also if you're born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the same power that changed you inwardly when you were saved can revolutionize your outwardly that even strangers on the street will be able to see Jesus in you. There's a grace on your life. There's a light upon your life. There's a, there's a kindness. There's peace. And, man, when people don't have those things, they're looking for people who do. That's why we need to be people of action, not just people of speech. You know, I, I shouldn't be a man that drops my kids off to children's church and I go my own way. And then I come back after church and pick them up. No, our kids need to see us. Same thing we're asking them to do. We're, we're excited about going to church. Right? Excited. Boy, those kids love that children's church. Youth love the youth. And let me give you a sobering quote about this. A.W. Tozer said, If the Holy Spirit withdrew from the church today, 95% of what we do would still go on and no one would know the difference. That's scary. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the New Testament church in the early days, 95% of what they did would stop. Come on, somebody say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Oh, God, let your word have its way. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. May we operate where there's a presence of God because people are lost, dying, and they, they so desperately need what we have. I hope you'll invite them to church because you're such a good example. Wherever you are, they, they come up and say, what, what's going on with you? There's a bunch of unrest around here. Why, why do you have peace? What, what's... Why do you handle these things differently? And, and don't be concerned about your past or being eloquent in your words. But here's what I would do. I would simply tell them my story. Tell them your story. Something that's real and relatable. God's presence changes everything. Talked about number three, minding our own business will help us find peace in anxious times. There's an actual scripture that says, study to be quiet and do your own business. Number four, watch out how much news you watch. Boy, you watch too much news and that it'll just when you start feeling like that sinking thing, like you're like, turn it off. Get back in the Word. Turn the Word on. Because if you don't, you're hearing things like this. As of July 17th, the death toll stood at 94 on the collapse of part of the 12-story residential building in Surfside, Florida, authorities said. And the number of people accounted accounted for is 222 and the number of people who are potentially unaccounted for is 31 and even preceding this tragedy an engineer raised concerns about major structural damage at that place in Florida a few years before it collapsed and and right after that I'm not going to give you much more stuff because I want you to be both built up don't don't listen to too much news. But then again, you know, you need to know what the headliners are happening out there. And that's about all I do. Miami-Dade apartment roof, same area, 
collapsed weeks after the Surfside condo. Number five, be ready to respond to people in general that try to steal your peace. Be ready. Might be a relationship challenge you're having right now. Keep your peace. Man, I'm telling you, how many have been around those people? They, they won't be satisfied until they have picked that fight with you. I mean, it just wouldn't be, you know. But when we act like we're supposed to, that gets their attention. Don't enter into that. It doesn't matter who it is. It, you could even have some friction with your spouse today, a sibling, a friend, employee, member of the church, a, a child. Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men. Do, do your absolute best. That means something, sometimes peace doesn't just come to us. We have got to go to it to make that peace in whatever situation you're, you're facing. Louis Giglio said, God is trying to set us right up in an upside-down world. We don't do things like the world does. We don't just act out of our unredeemed culture. We act out of the kingdom where everyone's the same. Everyone's loved the same. Everyone's welcome. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Oh, the world needs so much peace. Even the church needs so much peace. But you said in your word, in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. No, so do not let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. Don't permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly. And don't permit yourself to be unsettled. Thank you, Father. So we bow our heads to you, Father, and we just take inventory in our own life, fruit of the Spirit, and how have we been acting, and have we let, have we let somebody snag us into our old way of operating, our old way of thinking, our old unrenewed self, unredeemed self. But I know you're expecting us to do something better because we know better in your Word. Forgive us for times that... We didn't act right in situations. Forgive us if we didn't give another race a better experience than they see in the, in the world in general. God, I pray that pastors in pulpit today, they've chosen a side, and that's all they want to do is stay on that side. That's not kingdom. As a matter of fact, there's some, some pastors, they absolutely breathe division. God, help your church. Help, help us to see the truth and the light. Help us to change. Thank you, Father. Getting ready to pray a prayer of salvation, that prayer that will change you on the inside, the prayer that will, will cause you to be able to stand before the Lord in heaven with peace, being reconciled and as a ch newborn child of God. If you're not saved, you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give an opportunity right now. I'm going to pray a prayer and just right there in your seat say, Pastor Cole, when you pray this prayer, I want you to include me. Lift up your hand where I could see it, please. And, um, got you. And I see another hand there, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. So, those of you who raised your hand, I want you to say this out loud with us. Let's all say this, church, together. Say, God, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for all of our sin, 
all my sin. I repent, God, from my past, from my wrongdoings. And I know you've been, you've been raised from the dead. You are Lord of this world. Jesus, I ask you to become my Savior. I receive you as my Savior today, and I confess you as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand.